DBS is going to be this uh, this year. And it's by Duck Dynasty. How many of you know who Duck Dynasty is? Not most of you have heard of it. And it's called Faith Commander. Uh, I don't know if you know a lot. I'd like to give you a, just a little introduction as to who Doug Dynasty is. Bill Robinson and Kate Robinson are the mom and dad of the boys, and they are the starters of uh, Duck Commander is what it started with, okay? And Phil and his wife Kate got married when they were 16 and 17 years old. Phil got out of high school at that time and was a football player and took off for Louisiana Tech University to go to school there. And his testimony is, or Kate, all their testimony is, that they left home young and uh, went to college, and it, it, that would be in the 60s. And uh, there were a lot of things that uh, that impressed upon them to turn away from or to challenge their their life. Okay, so Phil got involved in drugs, got involved in alcohol. After they left college, they started a uh, bar. Okay. And, it, and while they're in this bar, and, uh, and both of them worked in it, Phil, whenever he drank, would get mad and belligerent. And uh, they talked, Miss Kate talked about one time that a guy with a Bible came by and talked to him about God. And Phil didn't want to have any part of it. But Phil, because of his drinking and all, got in trouble. And after he got in trouble, he even told, told his wife and his kids, three, three young, the three oldest boys were, were born at that time, he told them all they were cramping his style and asked them to leave, okay? But after he found that uh, he really had some problems, and after he decided to own up to them, he asked Miss Kate, if she would get him in touch with this guy that came by the barn with the Bible, okay? And, and uh, I want to read, read this to you if I can find it here. The, guy, the Bible carrying pastor who had visited his bar asked Phil, what do you think the gospel is? And Phil said, I don't know. Gospel music on the radio. The pastor explained to him how Jesus was born of the virgin, died on the cross, was buried, and was raised from the dead. And Phil was blown away by the idea that Jesus died for him and was raised. They were sitting in the baptistry of the church, and Phil said, I'm going to make Jesus the Lord of my life, and I want to follow him from this day forward. And Miss Kay and the three boys were downstairs in the church, and they heard what Phil said. And when Phil was baptized, the boys began hollering and shouting, My daddy saved. My daddy saved. My daddy saved. And you know, that was the start of a road back to God. And that was the start of, of the Robinson family being a Christian family. I don't know if you know it, but the Robinsons are um, the Church of Christ. Okay? That's the background that, that, uh, that evidently the preacher was, and that's where, where they are now. Tonight's theme is Redonculous Faith. Now, the, the, the writers and the producers and all of this VBS material is Willie's wife which is Corey, which is on the show, and Corey's mom, which is Miss Hire. And Corey's mom, she has written a number of books and a lot of material. 
evidently she, Corey comes from a very Christian family. Okay? But though the writers of, of the material is for BBS and the stuff we're going on tonight, what we're going to be doing, and you probably have heard, but the first night is tonight, Renoculus Faith. Next week it will be Radical Forgiveness. Next week it will be Bravest Prayer, Real Obedience, and Rowdy Kindness. Those are, those are the five that we're, going to, that we're going to be introducing. They're all a simple thing. And we're not going to hear anything we haven't heard before, okay? But we are going to hear it in a way that it's easy to listen to in the way that we should be using and presenting to our neighbors. I'd like to read for you first, though, before we get into the video. In Hebrews 11, okay, 11th chapter is a chapter about by faith. And it, and it says this, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for is certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancestors were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enid was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes from him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham, who called to go to a place he would later, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he was made, by faith he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him at the same of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, his architect, the builder is God. By faith, Abraham even thought he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father, because he considered himself faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in heaven, stars in the skies, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the, prop, the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they had, would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be racking. 
Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, who was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king. And by faith, Moses did when he had grown up refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasure of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his re reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around him for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who diso were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms the minister of justice, and gained what was promised. He shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the fires, and escaped into the sword. His wickedness was turned to spring, who became powerful in battle, and routed foreign, foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all committed for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for, better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Logan, go ahead and play.
for those who have put their faith and trust in Him. So when I heard that, when I heard that, I responded. I surrendered. I reenacted his death, burial, and resurrection in the water. My faith and trust has been in him ever since. Now, some people, when they look at my family, they actually think it's a ridiculous faith. Perhaps ridiculous. Because they look at us based on our external appearance, and they think we're either a bunch of wild, crazy people who are just cutting up every way possible or they think we're homeless or they think we're a threat so as they come closer and see who we are they realize that we are people of faith because we have placed our faith in a being specifically Jesus Christ up until I was 14 years old I was a pretty shy guy I hunted and fished a lot but I didn't say a whole lot out in public. And people kind of viewed me as socially shy. And that was a correct assertion. I just seemed to be in the woods and hunt and fish and do my own thing. But once I put my faith in Christ, I realized that this is not something that I was going to be able to be silent about. Plus, I started noticing girls for the first time. And I realized, you know, if I don't have a conversation with a girl, I'm probably not going to get a date. So I said, I need to be a little more vocal about my faith. And at the same time, you know, maybe I can get a date if I can find a spiritual woman who shares the same views about Christ that I do. So that was my plan. The problem was, whenever I would go to school or I would get out in public, I would get a little nervous about speaking up, especially about my faith. And then I had an instance where everything changed. When I was in high school, we had landlines for phones. And you had to walk over, grab the phone, it's plugged into the wall, and if you want to talk to somebody, you push the numbers and you're right there. There were no cell phones. So I had an interesting call one night at about midnight, but it was right after I had just prayed about being more vocal and bold about my faith. And the person that called me just sat there. I don't know if it was a prank caller or they planned on just sitting there. So I was fixed to hang up because I was like, hello, hello, hello. And then it hit me. I thought, you know, here I am struggling with sharing my faith. And I have a person calling me who is just sitting there. So just like a light switch, I just said, you know what? I'm glad you called because I've been wanting to share my faith in Christ. And I've been unable to do so in public because I'm shy. So I'm going to share with you what I'm in on. And I started right there, and I introduced this unknown caller to Jesus Christ. Now, after about 10, 15 minutes, I kept trying to get them to say something, and they wouldn't respond. But I could tell someone was there because I would hear the phone go down, and then I heard pages rustling, and I assumed that they were following along in their Bible. So this Bible study went on for three hours. I basically ran out of material. And I said, look, I'm sleepy. I appreciate you calling. I feel good about this. Why don't you call back tomorrow night? Same time. Lo and behold, the next night at midnight, they called me again. They just sat there. So here we go again. I put another three hours in, and I noticed when the person on the other end of the phone doesn't respond, you can really bring it. I mean, I was getting after it. And after about three hours, I heard this outcry of emotion, and they hung up. And so after that moment, I realized, you know what? This is real. I realized that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and what he's doing at the right hand of God right now, is the most powerful message on earth. What else could I have shared that a person would have sat there and listened to for six hours. It's real. Everyone is in need of forgiveness. And everyone would love the opportunity to live forever. And Christ provides that. So when I shared that message with her, it changed my life because I realized what Philemon verse 6 says. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of everything we have in Christ. 
It became real. I then realized that God uses flawed individuals to make his son known. So not only do we have faith, we have faith in action every time we share. My conversation with this unknown caller didn't lead to a response where I knew what happened. I never heard back from the person. But what it did in a practical way is it fired me up for Christ. Because I thought, this is real. This is powerful. It's captivating. From that moment on, I shared Jesus Christ with everyone in earshot. I sat down and made a list of all my friends and family. And I systematically went down through the list. It was over 100 names. And I <coughs> said to myself, I'm going to approach this person. I'm going to ask if I can share my faith. And I'm going to share Jesus with them all. And I did. So, and from then on, I just finally realized, you know what? It's about your lifestyle. And it's looking for opportunities to introduce Christ to other people. And through that sensation, I realized what I think true faith is and that it is not about me. This is not about my story. What I share is Christ's story because that's what changed my life and that's what can change the world. So that's what I do. That's what I've been doing since I was 14 with the help of a prank caller. And basically, I feel like that's what faith is. A lot of people, when they talk about faith, they think it's some kind of belief system or they want to have a discussion about Bible verses or have arguments or discussions. I believe it is a person, a being, and his name is Jesus Christ. And we introduce that being to other people. And that's the hub. My first God experience after witnessing the transformation of my parents' lives was actually out in the woods. I was hunting, I looked around, and I remember just stopping everything and thinking, somebody built this. This earth is just too incredible to come from nothing. And so the seeds of God were planted basically on the observation of His creation. I thought this has a design and it demands a design. And the more I began to reflect on that and think about that and ask questions about that, the more spiritual conversations I started having. And through that, I was led to hearing the message of Jesus Christ and what He did for not only my sins, but for the hope of me living forever. So, after I placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I then realized that there are different kinds of hearts in our world. The parable of the sower, what it means to me is that it represents the four different types of hearts on the earth. The first heart, here is the word about Christ and just absolutely rejects it. The second heart represents the seed that fell among rocky places where there was no root, the soil was shallow, and the sun scorched it. And what happens is when someone hears the message about Christ, they're persecuted. And that second heart represents those who cannot take the persecution of their faith, so they fall away. The third heart is the seed that comes up, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke it, making it unfruitful. This is the type of heart that sometimes church buildings are full of. They come to church and sing songs, but they have no faith in the Christ. It's kind of like a social club. They're worried about, they're more worried about created things rather than the Creator. But the fourth heart is the one that hears the Word, understands it, puts their trust in Christ, and then produces a crop. That's the heart that realizes that God uses you to make Christ known. And whatever you do, in action or in word, He uses you. And it's powerful. And it draws people to God through the message of His Son. And that's the fiery faith. That's the ridiculous faith. The perhaps ridiculous faith. I've never heard the term ridiculous. But I'm just saying. What's ridiculous is that somebody that looks like me 
can be possessed by the same God who made the planet. And he uses me, despite my flaws, to make the knowledge of his son known. So all you have to do is vocalize it and live it in your life. And if he can use me, he can use anybody. thing that he had to go see that was in, in his family and he had to go see if he was a carrier of it. So he went to the doctor and the doctor took his blood and the doctor came back and told him that he was clear and that he didn't he wasn't a carrier. But the doctor it showed him the results and explained to him that here is your mother's bloodline and here is your dad's bloodline. And he said, uh, Doc, there's one more bloodline. And he said, no, I don't think so. I don't ever, I've never known there being more than two bloodlines. He said, yes, sir. Jack, that's the real way you know it's side talking. Yeah, Jack, there is, okay? And uh, he said, Jesus' bloodline is in there. Because he said, I gave my heart to Jesus. His blood is flowing through me. And uh, these guys are doing something that is uncommon, okay? They, I don't think it's all that uncommon that God has taken someone like Bill Robinson and Kay and taken them from, from drugs and from drinking and from the background they have and has made a success out of them. I don't think that's what's uncommon. I think what is uncommon is that they, in such a common way, share their faith on a daily basis. And you know what? Everybody has told them whenever they got to be on A and E and they got the television program, that the television program will change them. And you know they have done everything that they can. Probably a lot of prayers have gone up by them to make sure that television, okay, success doesn't change them, but that they use their platform to be able to reach people for Christ. And it's, and it's, a, it's a great thing that they are doing. I, I think they did, did a wonderful job. You know, God can change anything, okay, if we'll just let him use this and they're letting him use them. I brought Willow to Wednesday night to Bible study. I have to tell you all this, is she really enjoys coming over to Bible study. She goes to the Catholic Church in New Madrid, and they live in New Madrid. So we left, whenever I came over to Bible study and went over and got her, and she left with me, and we got in the truck, and you know it was storm, it looked like it's going to rain. And I said, Willa, if you would say a prayer for a Papa that his crops get a rain, because rain's coming. And so I just started. I said, Father in heaven, we love you. Rain's on, it looks like rain's on its way, and we would love for you to bless us and put rain on our crops. And you know what Willow did? She closed her eyes and she said, In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Do you know why she did that? That's the way they're teaching her to start and to end their prayers. It, but it is great to watch her have a concept of talking to God. Because she, that's probably some of her most serious times that she has when she stops 
and she, and she cries. It, it is, it is great. It, it is great. It really, is. I love it. We're gonna stand and we're gonna sing our closing again. Thank y'all for coming. We're about to say, give back. If you got the words up there.